episode of Drug Talk. This is episode 7, and we're going to be discussing the medication known as bupropion. Now, bupropion is similar to the medication we discussed in episode 6, sertraline, in the sense that they can both be used to treat depression. Where sertraline was a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, bupropion is a serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. So it touches on two chemicals instead of just the one. If you're not familiar with the name bupropion, you can actually find this medication marketed under other brand names, such as Wellbutrin XL, as well as some generic forms of bupropion SR, and also Zyban when it's used for smoking cessation. So I mentioned that it can be used in depression as well as smoking cessation. Aside from those two conditions, it can actually be used to treat seasonal affective disorder as well. Aside from those main uses, there are also some off-label uses where you can see this medication used sometimes. These off-label uses are obesity, depression associated with bipolar disorder, as well as ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. In the States, it's marketed under a wide variety of brand names, but here in Canada, it's mainly just Wellbutrin, Zyban, and then the different generics of Bupropion, SR. So in terms of how it's available, I'll just discuss a couple of them. Wellbutrin XL, which is the extended release version, is available as a 150 milligram tablet as well as a 300 milligram tablet. It's very important with this specific formulation to try to get 24 hours in between dosing as well as not to crush or chew the tablet as you may disrupt the delivery mechanism. The SR version that I talked about usually seen with the generics is a sustained release mechanism. It's important to separate these doses as well, but it doesn't have to be like the XL in 24 hours. With this one, you mainly have to separate doses by 8 hours, and it's usually taken twice a day. It's common practice that a physician would start you off on a lower dose and slowly increase the dose as your body gets used to the medication to try to decrease the risk of any side effects happening to you. The brand Zyban that we discussed is only available in a 150 milligram tablet. Before starting a medication or being prescribed this medication, your physician would check out your kidney and your liver function. For your kidneys, where there's impairment, the manufacturer's label does actually recommend to decrease the dose, but it doesn't give a specific recommendation. Your physician would make this decision. This is similar for your liver in the sense that with mild impairment, there's no specific recommendation given, just that you may want to reduce the dose. Again, this would be decided by your physician and pharmacist. With moderate to severe impairment, your physician would be able to find specific recommended dosing for this medication. Now, there are some contraindications of this medication as well. That is, reasons your physician could not prescribe the medication to you. One contraindication is a history of eating disorders. Another is a history of seizures, or if you currently had epilepsy, as well as different conditions which may put you at an increased risk of having a seizure, such as a severe head trauma. Now, assuming that you met with your physician, got a prescription, and it's been deemed necessary for you to take this medication, there are a couple things you should know. First off, you can take this medication with or without food. It does not have to be taken with regard to meals. It's important, as mentioned, not to crush or chew these tablets, especially when you see that XL, extended release, or SR, sustained release, on your vial. That means that these tablets are formulated in a certain way that the medication is slowly released over the course of hours, or even with the XL, over the course of a day. If you chew the tablet, you'll disrupt this mechanism and the medication won't be delivered as it's supposed to be. The best thing you can do to assure that you're taking the medication appropriately is just to follow the directions on your label and take the medication as prescribed by your physician. There are some side effects worth noting with this medication as well. Around 11% of individuals experience a rapid heart rate while using this medication. Anywhere from about 10 to 40% of people experience insomnia, that is, difficulty sleeping. For this reason, it's important to take the medication in the morning when you first start taking it so that it has less of an effect on your sleep. 25 to 34% of individuals experience headache. Now, this is a wide range, but anywhere from 2 to 32% of individuals experience agitation. And anywhere from 6 to 22% of people experience dizziness. Up to 22% of individuals experience sweating, and from 14 to 23% experience weight loss. Moving down to your gastrointestinal tract, about 8 to 26% of individuals experience constipation. You can also experience nausea and vomiting, or just nausea as well. If you experience blurred vision or tremors, you may want to let your physician know, as they may want to change or lower the dose of your medication.
Although discontinuation symptoms are less frequent with Welbutrin when compared to other antidepressants, it's still important to taper the medication gradually, that is, come off the medication slowly, so that you can decrease the chance of having re-emergent symptoms. As the medication makes its way through your body and heads towards the exit, it's metabolized by the CYP-P450 system with many of these different enzymes taking, taking their part. Now, the major one is actually CYP-2B6. That's all we're going to talk about today with bupropion. I apologize I'm not in the virtual pharmacy today. We, I just finished a move, and we'll have the green screen set up for the next episode, so I can jump back in there. As always, only use this channel for information purposes only, and don't make any personal decisions after watching these videos. Always consult your personal healthcare provider. If you think I'm providing valuable information and you'd like to help see this channel grow, you can like the videos or subscribe on YouTube. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by. Subscribe below.